afternoon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Blaine Tollison and I'm Susanna Black. Channel 9 is committed to bringing you the newest and most critical information surrounding the coronavirus pandemic. And right now we want to get you caught up on what's happening today to make sure that you and your family know what is going on through the weekend with the pandemic. And here is the very latest so far right now. North Carolina lawmakers are voting on more than a billion dollars in COVID-19 aid and the House and Senate each passed their own versions Thursday night. The Senate's version is 1.4 billion with 125 million to help small businesses. The House approved $1.7 billion in relief, but only $75 million for small businesses. Lawmakers, they've been working on a compromise since 9 o'clock this morning. Another big midday update. The FDA just approved emergency use of the first drug shown to help patients with the virus. A study found patients who took the drug uh, remdesivir, they recovered faster than patients who did not. The drug might also prevent some deaths. It's too early to know for sure, but the drug's maker is ramping up production. Lastly, a huge announcement from South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster. The state's work or home order will be lifted on Monday, and this will impact restaurants, hotels, and much more. And Governor Henry McMaster made that big announcement just yesterday, and here's what it's going to mean for you. Restaurants will open, but you'll be only able to sit outside and eat. Hotels and short-term rentals will be able to take reservations from anybody coming in from COVID-19 hotspots like New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and New Orleans. And effective immediately, people from those areas, they will not have to quarantine for two weeks. And if you go to a restaurant Monday, here's what it's going to look like. Tables will be at least eight feet apart. There is also uh, going to be only eight people sitting at one table. Tables and chairs will need to be sanitized after each use. Restaurants are going to limit the number of customers inside the restaurant, even if you're just walking through to an outdoor area or getting takeout. And last night we talked to restaurant owners in the Fort Mill area, and they are uh, ex very excited to finally start uh, reopening and serving those sit-down customers. But uh, one of their biggest priorities right now is making sure that their staff is ready. We're excited about it. Uh, whether or not we're ready at 11 o'clock to dine outside, we may stick to the takeout and delivery for a day or two. We just want to make sure our staff is comfortable and well-educated so we can properly serve the public. Governor McMaster says decisions on other businesses, also mass gatherings, those are expected to come out soon. And in North Carolina, we've told you there would be three phases to reopening. And here's what that's expected to look like. In phase one, you'll be able to travel for reasons that are not essential. And some non-essential businesses will reopen, like clothing stores, sporting goods stores, and bookstores. Now, you will still have to practice social distancing, and you're encouraged to wear a mask. So many businesses can't wait to get back to some sense of normal. The owners of the Royal Cafe and Crapery and Matthews say that their restaurant is their American dream. They immigrated here in the 90s, but their restaurant has been closed for most of the pandemic. They just reopened for takeout orders last week. It's a passion and it's a dream come true for us and watching it kind of crumble, you know, due to something that we haven't anticipated and something that we can't control is just devastating. Alexis Patero applied for federal relief but didn't get any. New at noon, North Carolina has now surpassed 11,000 cases of coronavirus. We just got those updated numbers in the last hour and take a look at this map. 21 more people have died. That means more than 400 people have lost their lives from this virus. And we want you to keep in mind that the state has completed nearly 140,000 tests. So that means only about 8% of all of those tests have come back positive. Now to South Carolina, there are more than 6,200 positive cases with 256 deaths. Less than 11% of tests there have come back positive. All right, now we have an incredible update to a story that I first told you about yesterday. Earlier, I introduced you to this Charlotte mom who was struggling to pay her rent. Martina Dennerson was forced to shut down her medical massage clinic in March. And she told me that she was down to her last $40. Her son has autism and regular doctor appointments. She was struggling to support herself, him and help her daughter who's currently in college. Well, Martina got back to me this morning and shared that she had just gotten financial help 
from some very generous Channel 9 viewers. And get this, she told me that her rent, her office space rent, and her daughter's college apartment rent is now totally paid for. And that is all thanks to the kindness of our viewers who she doesn't even know. And um, I just have to say thank you to those viewers as well. Meeting with Martina yesterday truly touched me. Uh, she's been working so hard like so many families are right now, and uh, she's very thankful. Now, what do you do if you can't pay your rent during this time? You can always talk to your landlord. See if he or she will give you a discount or maybe set up a payment plan. Chances are your landlord would rather get something rather than nothing. Just make sure you get everything in writing, especially how much money you owe and when. But remember, your landlord doesn't have to bend. He or she has a right to demand the full amount on schedule. If things go south, your landlord, though, cannot kick you out. He or she would have to take you to court, but courts aren't hearing eviction cases until at least July, so you can stay put. And if you need any help, you can always contact Legal Aid.